Hey y'all, welcome to another video by Fabric Cobble Garage. In today's video, we're going to show you how to bleed some brakes. Now this particular vehicle is a 1978 F350 Camper Special. Uh, I recently had got it from my dad. We kind of worked on it in the past, and we've had it for quite some time. When we got the truck, it didn't have an engine in it, and we pulled the engine out of a another truck in a junkyard and put it in, and it's just been sitting, and so here recently... I'm going to try to get it up and going again and we have rebuilt the front calipers but whenever he was working on it by himself he couldn't bleed the brakes and so uh, we're going to go ahead and do that today now the first thing you want to do is make sure you got plenty of brake fluid and that your cap is off now this cap is off it's just kind of tilted to the side on some older vehicles uh, the fluid can come back up especially if there's air in the system. So on an older vehicle, just set the cap on. As you can tell, it's off to the, like it's twisted some so that any air can circulate freely for whenever uh, we're letting the air out and everything. So it's pretty easy. All you're gonna need is two people to bleed the brakes, your brake fluid and a wrench or two, depending on if they're different sizes front to back. So the reason why you need to bleed your brakes is because any air in the system uh, will, will cause spongy brakes and such like that. Now, the reason why is because air doesn't compress uh, like the, the fluid does, and so that's why you get the sponginess. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start furthest away from your master cylinder. So especially on any American car where it's left-hand drive, you'll start passenger rear, and then you'll go to driver rear, then passenger front, driver front. And all you're going to do is, and we'll show it to you, is you'll pump up the brakes. You'll have one person pump up the brakes. The other person will uh, tell them to hold. They'll hold the brakes down. And then you crack the bleeder screw open and some fluid and hopefully the air will come out and then you close it and then you tell the person to pump the brakes again and hold it and break it free and so on until only fluid comes out and i'll show you what it looks like when the air is coming out the important part is that the two people stay in synchronization because if you let off the pedal with the bleeder screw open, it will suck in air and then you have to start over again, which is no fun. So, we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna go to the uh, passenger rear tire. Show you what we're looking at. All right, so on this particular truck, it's got drums in the rear that bleed just the same as if it had a uh, rotor, uh, uh, They've had discs in the rear. Now, newer vehicles do, but they still make drums because they work just fine. So because it's a drum, it has a wheel cylinder, which is up top here. And this right here is your bleeder screw. Now, they'll normally have a little cap on it just to keep dust and stuff out. And the way you'll always know where your bleeder screw is, is it'll be above your line here. So here's your line. Here's your bleeder. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to get my wrench ready, I'm going to set it on there. Now I already broke these free, so they're already broken free. I'm going to bring the camera back some, hopefully you can still see that. Already pumped the brakes, hold, alright as you saw no air come out of that, it was just a straight stream. We'll do it a couple more times just to make sure. Already pumped the brakes. Hold. All right, pretty good. We'll do it one more time. Pump the brakes. Hold. All right, we got a lot more pressure that time. Still no air. We'll do it just one last time, just for good measure. Pump the brakes. Hold. Okay. Yep. No air in that one. We're good. 
All right, now you do want to be careful. I am in dirt, so it's not too big of a deal, but brake fluid is very uh, corrosive. It'll eat paint. You don't want to get it on your skin and let it soak because it'll cause uh, discomfort. And it'll also eat concrete, so you want to be careful for that too. So here's the other one, if you can see that. It's right there, it's the same. We'll reach around, put a wrench on it. Already pumped the brakes. Hold. Alrighty. Pump the brakes. Hold. Oh, shoot. It's okay if it slips off. As long as they don't release while it's open. Pump the brakes. Hold. All right. So it's doing pretty good. There's no air in the system, which they, he did rebuild the front, not the rear. So it is very possible that uh, the rear wasn't the problem, but you always want to start at the back just in case. I don't know if I can just get off from underneath this truck. These creepers don't really like to roll in the sand very well. Here we go. Now we're rolling. All right. Now, we'll go to the front. Like I said, we'll go to the passenger front now. Now, on this particular truck, it was a 10 on the back, and it's a 3 8 in the front. Uh, let's actually grab the catch can real quick, because we are on concrete now. Um, I know we have one. Just give me one second, I'll find it real quick. Alrighty. So I've found that catch can. Now, what you want to do is, uh, like I said, you want to make sure your fluid doesn't get too low. So you can see this reservoir here is a lot lower than it was. So we're going to fill it up. Now, on this particular style, uh, I do believe the two reservoirs for the different, the front and the rear, are separated. Now on newer vehicles, it's all in one, so you just want to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't get too low, because if it gets too low, and then uh, it'll start sucking in air, and like I said, then you have to start all over again, which is no fun. So, got that filled back up. We'll just set our cap back on there, give it a little twist, just so it can breathe. Now, we got our catch can. Alright, now we'll start, like I said, passenger front first. Oh, everything's falling. Let's see, let me get a little, make a little bit more visible. Um, stick this in here. Uh, There, you can see that. All right. So, like I said, you just do it the same as before. And on this one, you're always going to want to look at the top because it's going to be your bleeder. Focus. Your bleeder is going to be at the top. So, we'll break it free real quick before we start just to make it easier. Okay. Let me set you guys down real quick. I can look underneath the truck. All right. We got it broke free. Focus. All right. We're going to actually move, so just in case we don't get shot by brake fluid. All right, pump it. Hold. Oh, okay, okay. Pump it. Hold. Okay, it's, it's doing pretty good so far. Pump it. 
Oh. Okay. We'll do it one more time. Bump it. Hold. Oh, shoot. Okay, that one shot pretty far. Okay, well, no air on that side. Interesting, interesting. Like I said, this fluid will get up on the concrete. You just don't want to let it soak because it will eat the concrete. It'll take time, but it will do it. Okay. Oh, now we need to... Hey, Bo, get out of here. Break this free real quick. Get that broken free. Now, I'm gonna get out of this path so we don't get shot with the broken one. Already pump it. Hold it. Oh, god dang. That is flying now. Okay. Uh, shoot, I don't think we have any air in this. This is kind of strange. All right, we'll try it one more time. Pump it. Hold it. Okay, we don't have any air. Alrighty, well, some strange results. We still have a soft pedal. So, there is something causing it. But we don't have any air in the system. It's very strange, but... I guess we'll figure it out somehow. But anyway, hmm. anyway, that's how you would bleed your brakes. Now, like I said, ideally, the sponginess of your brakes would be caused by uh, be caused by air in the system, which will cause it. And when you're bleeding them, so you see how it had a steady, strong stream. That would indicate that there isn't air in the system. The way you would know is if it barely comes out or if it makes like little pop noises and there's gaps of fluid, that's little air bubbles coming out. And that's what you want. And that's what you'd be looking for. And like I said, this case, that's not what happened. Um, but we'll get it figured out what's causing the issue. And then as soon as we do, we'll make a video of how to fix it. But anyway, if this, was, if this video was helpful or if y'all have any idea of what it could be then i'd appreciate it and leave a comment uh if you like the video drop a like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and check out our other videos but anyway we'll see y'all in the next one